Okay, welcome back to the Thursday session of the seventh meeting of the CHAP committee. I'd like to continue uh, this morning with our uh, recommendations. And yesterday we um, left at five o'clock discussing uh, diethyl phthalate and I'd like to uh, take up that discussion today. And I think, um, as I understand it, um, Andreas, you have some uh, verbiage that you'd like to propose. Is that correct for? Yes, this verbiage is, is forthcoming in five minutes. In five minutes, okay. Um, and I wanted to, indicate that uh, what I will do when I get back um, home echo is will I will try to convert all of these recommendations in, into a one page document um, but for now we have what we have in front of us which is good because we have virtually all of the information that we need uh, before us to make a recommendation, but I will try to condense it into a one-page document. Yes? I think based upon where we've been heading, we do have to add a sentence or two about whether it's in toys or products that are under the purview of CPSC in there, because we don't say that, we don't say that. We talk about exposure from the vantage point of Biomonitoring, which again is that integrated, un unresolved issue about where it comes from. So I think we should have to take a little bit a sentence from from the um, final CPSC memo, which changes a little bit the food intake portion, and um, and add that to it. Because I'll because that's the issue of the source. It's about a sentence or so. Okay. Well, again, let's bring that up in the discussion today. Because we did bring it up twice already, you know, in terms of discussion about recommendations. So I think we need a pay statement before we reach that point as to why. One thing we said yesterday um, was, I think, uh, to ban the word recommendation to recommend something I think Russ suggested to CPSC regarding whatever. Whatever. I can't remember the <clears throat> focusing on toys and child care products or and something. Personal like care that. products, yeah. Personal care products, but yep. make it not just general recommendation but recommendation to CPS specifically for um, toys and child care articles right some regards to toys and child care articles Is this what we're talking about it's on the label in, in five on the label recommendation not number five I yeah. mean for all of these I think the bold the number rec five. Yeah. recommendation to <clears throat> To CPSC on products of concern. Yeah. Fine. That resolves a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I have no problem with that. Andreas, are you rephrasing six? Oh, five. Oh, okay, for the recommendation. But I have no problem with the way six is phrased. I think that's good. 
I'm very comfortable with that. I think a, a couple, we, I looked up this Oishi and Haraga paper, and as far as I can tell, it was DEHP was the study, assuming I have the right paper. You know, unless there's another another Oishi paper. Let's see. Do I have the references here? Yes. Yes. Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. There is another paper. It's decreased serum testosterone. find it in the review that's in in burns uh, okay I don't see it but it's in burns yeah on page 22 of his so it is a decrease mm-hmm And he also says, um, so reported significantly decreased serum testosterone, serum dihydrotestosterone, and testicular testosterone in JCL with star rats following dietary exposure. 
and then he adds these results are questionable however when taken in context of other results of the study where increases in testosterone oh, okay, okay. levels were seen after exposure to DBP, DIBP, and DHP. Okay. I have another paper from Lou et al. where they looked at gene expression. And I think uh, in this study, DEP did not look like the other, like the active phthalates. Is that dimethyl diethyl in dioctyl terephthalate were not active? draft recommendation for diethyl this is really um, just to get us going that's the intention um, I don't regard it as final it needs wordsmithing probably editing But perhaps, perhaps instead of calling it a recommendation, it's it's really the the sort of summary of the that it's you know under section four risk assessment considerations. There's an exposure section and a hazard section, but we don't ever put them together. And so I'm I would propose that we think about maybe a four C, that could be summary, summary or something where we actually do make statements like what Andres has done. Uh, it's not. Not the recommendation, but it's the sort of our evaluation of, of where it yeah. sits. Yeah, I think that would be a good idea because it's uh, under risk assessment. Risk assessment is typically uh, three steps: exposure, hazard, and then risk assessment. I think I think that would be logical. And then the way is free to get to the point, straight to the point under number five recommendation. Mike, could you could you do that? Yeah. What? So the first two paragraphs would go under four uh, C. Okay.
What would you want to title for C, risk assessment? Okay. It is. You can call it risk. what I did <laughs> the northern I lights. did not lose it last one would be or oh, uh, since the paragraph before that is also a recommendation uh, we could just swap it around I would suggest yeah. that would be fine yeah start with the last paragraph then the second and the first one goes under 4c <laughs> it did. <laughs> you wished it away and it disappeared. <laughs> Too many documents open. Right, move Take down. away that last. Move, move down. Okay. Get rid of. Before you. Stop recommends from there. Oh, you got two documents. Yeah. Put that under five now. That's not the main one. That's the main one. Where's 5A go? It's there. I would go 5A and 5B. Five's there, and then you put. Just have two paragraphs that, you know, in that order, and we just can consistently do that. Now, as far as the statement goes, um, there are consumer products where there's exposure to DEP, but they're not toys and child care articles. Right, that's what we that's what I try to express by saying since exposures from articles under the remit of CPSC, from articles, not, near, yeah. not specifying what they are precisely. And, and instead of non-existent, how about negligible? <coughs> and in the second paragraph, we maybe should Replace of stellate with DEP. Catch. <laughs> I, does that capture what we discussed yesterday? That sort of. I think so. Yeah. <clears throat> Good job. Just a minor, you, you don't need the human in front of epidemiologic. By definition, they're all human. Yes, you are right. Sorry. We're not worrying about the snail daughter this morning. The what? The snail daughter this morning, we're not worrying about it. No. Okay. <laughs> although, although the institute I work at now, they, they are ecotoxicologists, and there's something like eco epidemiology, but we don't need to split out. You know, I, we have the same issue. There are people who do eco. Yep.
populations of, of animals and bugs. Russ, is this also, is it reproductive outcomes? Can, can you confirm that from the epi studies? Reproductive, um, well for DEP, there's the, the Swan and Suzuki study with AGD, which is really a developmental reproductive. Yeah, so it, yeah, would fit within both. And then there's the neurodevelopmental, and then which is not really talked a lot about in the report, but it's in the appendix are the associations with semen quality in adult men, for instance, or um, yeah. So I think reproductive and developmental would be fair. So that's a style we can use. Okay. Cool. Can we cycle back to uh, DMP then and um, add a, a 4C to the For C. Risk. Again, what would be the content I meant at this point? <clears throat> In this case, we really have say. no human studies <clears throat> and Limited outcome data in toxicological studies? Yeah. I would say that. I guess what reproductive and developmental. Can, can we simply say risks to, um, to humans are currently not discernible? Okay. Risks to humans, humans are currently not discernible or indeterminate or whatever. From human studies and or Animal toxicology. Yeah, but that's why I suggest the phrase it risk to risks to humans. That, okay. that they're normally also extrapolated from animals. So, okay. So we don't as need long, to go as long as it covers it, we're fine. Yeah. Would you want to add a because? Because of lack of data, because of because it you know not specific to this. It could be lack of data, inconsistent data. It could be data showing no effect. This really would be because of a lack of data? Lack of relevant data. Yeah. All right. And the, the sentence starting with therefore uh, could be moved to number five. Yeah, yeah it's, it's already there. Yeah. So, Mike, I know we're going to edit um, some of the other text in these pieces, but that margin of exposure, I think, is not a correct. That was based on old assumptions that we moved away from at yeah, the bottom of part A. I'll highlight it. I think it just needs to be cut, that whole sentence. Cut it. Just cut it. So when you when you said you were gonna that these were gonna be they're gonna be one page each for each chemical. 
if I can do that, yes. Okay, not one page for, okay. Um, and, I mean, we can talk more about it, but I assume that the human part, you would want me to write that, which I'm fine doing. Yes, I, you're, you were going to provide that, yeah. And it was, we were going to move away from the bullets for each study and have more of a synthesis, you know, almost like the way exposure is written here. You know, yes. there were X number of studies and these are the associations they saw, right. et cetera. Okay. Yep. yep. I can do that. Okay. Everyone happy with? I will, I will help to update the exposure part based on the most recent calculations. Yep. Okay. Yes, if, if, if all of you could provide updates relevant to your expertise, that would be great. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be helpful to me. Okay. I'll incorporate that and I'll do the development reproductive toxicity parts and, and the human. Yep. Great. Great. And when I finish, I'll, I'll uh, email that to everyone and get your comments. Okay, so everyone happy with DMP and DEP? Okay. Then let us move on to DBP. <clears throat> well, isn't it important at this stage to start with uh, the observation that uh, DBP is already under current law and from occurring in in the articles under CSC's remit. We not make it very short and then say the we we see no reason to to alter this practice. That's it. I think we could do that under under four C again under risk uh, that that essentially the data still support the, the current ban. ban. Under 4C risk. I, would, you, would you say both the, the animal and the human data continue to support the, the current CPSC ban? Okay. Do we want to add a statement to back? fact that this ban is, is, is operating because we found no exposure to kids' toys and products that are under CPSC. Purview? 
Well, this is probably a result of the current regulation. Yeah, that's what I'm just yeah. saying is that, yeah. you know, and consistent with that, we found in our analysis there is no exposure. Current exposure. Boys or other products are under the purview of since it shows that the thing is working. They, yeah. You know? I think that's good. Somebody might ask, well, is it there or is it not there? And it's not. Any um, comments about the, the wording here for 5 or 4C and 5? I guess my only comment, I mean, I th I'm fine with what's there, but I, am, I was trying to make a distinction in 4C <laughs> as being more of a evaluation of where things were and then recommend, you know, in terms of the science and then the recommendation part. Part five, and we're kind of blending that now. But um, I, you know, I think there's not much more to say here. Mm -mm. So, I, but in general, I, I think the idea in four C was to make it sort of the what does it mean? You know, how we're evaluating the conditions that are described in parts uh, A and B. Mm -hmm. um, already banned, you know, there's no need to go and repeat stuff from before. We're just continuing the ban. Well, don't you, don't you think that the statement that both animal and human data support maintain right. ban is a, is a fair summary of A and B? Yeah. Yes, although strictly speaking, uh, Chris is of course right. It's not a it's a it's a recommendation, not a risk statement. But did he say, "Of course, Chris was right." <laughs> of course. <laughs> I mean, we could, yeah, we could have a few sentences that that summarize the animal data, the human data, if that's what you yeah. want to have. Yeah, I think because I I would like to add something else on the recommendation along the lines of what we said about DEP. Um, yeah. And to do that, it, it needs a bit of a, um, a coat hanger, and that coat hanger is here among C. So we could say something that we believe risk assessment uh, of exposures from other sources needs to be carried out by the other competent authorities in the USA. It could be under number five recommendation. Oh, yeah. I have the language from up here.
For example, In order to make the go back to number C, 4C, um, if you scroll up a little more, there's, there's a statement at the end of A, 4A, about margins of exposure. There we are, last sentence. Yeah, yeah that, that, uh, I'm not suggesting to copy it, um, no. but, but uh, under C, this risk we could simply uh, refer to that and make a statement to the effect that, uh, you know, in view of the irreversibility and, uh, you know, the lasting damage that may be caused, um, this margin of exposure is, is deemed too small. And so that, that would then build a bridge to the recommendation in number five that, to the other U.S. agencies. So say something like that under 4C, but the margin of exposure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Persistent. How do we know how to describe it? It's a, um, it's a, it's an irreversible effect. I think those numbers aren't, we need to verify those numbers. Right. That's not what's in our tables at this point. Mm. So it's in the it same needs, ballpark, but the numbers aren't quite right. It needs to be a therefore after effect, I think. Otherwise, that sentence doesn't really. Therefore. Oh, okay. Maybe that needs to be the first sentence. The margins of exposure needs to be the first sentence. Yes. Would that be the therefore? Therefore, both animal and human data support maintaining the ban. Or a however. I would suggest to change the term irreversible effects into too small for the severity of the effects described above. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I think that's better. I would suggest to slightly modify the second sentences in the sentence in C. The current DBP is not found in these articles in relevant amounts. Because DBP is omnipresent. 
So I just would like to add, not in relevant amounts. What does relevant mean? It's Definitely a vague it means that it is there. It means more than 0.1 percent. Yes. It means it can be found everywhere. Here it means biologically relevant amounts. Biologically? No. No, in relevant, in the sense of the text of the law, i.e., more than 0.1 percent. All right, that's fine. That would be fine. Can be present. Fine. Mike, is this U.S. legislation 0.1 percent? Yes, it's the same. Yeah, it's same here. Yeah, I mean we haven't seen dibutyl in a long time. I think only once. Does that mean we need to? If we're saying it's not really there, we haven't seen it in a long time, but we're now saying margins of exposure is small. That's based on data back in that's, the that's, well, these are, five years ago. But they're also total exposure. This right. is total human exposure. Total human exposure. Oh, you're saying when you're saying sources. it's not available, you're saying in toys. Not in toys. Oh, yes, okay. yes. Keeping focused. Is we can put a paragraph, make, sure make this a new paragraph. Do we need that extra however? Yeah, I don't know about the however. I don't know. Okay. The margins of safety. Maybe just take out the deemed. I don't know if that's. It makes it. I think it would be a stronger statement. Are too small considering the severity. Are small. Any other comments? Just on C or also on five? Well, on five or or six. Well, for five, should the recommendation? It says no further. I think this was just carried forward. But should it be recommends um, maintaining the permanent ban on DBP? Well, I think the permanent. You can say it, but it, I think it's not necessary because it's. Permanent, but it's okay to say it. Better to say it. Or um, should I say because it's permanently banned? Further action required. Yes, in writing these, we have to think sometimes someone may just read. Number five, yeah, not yeah. the rest, and yeah, yeah, okay. I think is moved.
you changed the, the last paragraph a bit. You took out, you just focused on food. And yeah, I took a comma out. Food, food supplements. Where it, the, the paragraph starts with however chap. You know, maybe basically use the same language that we used before, where we said, I think, personal care products, food, yeah. pharmaceuticals. I took out the drugs because... It is... I, I would leave them... I would leave it in. Okay. Yeah. Why Why take it out? Uh, well, I was... that it's in. Food. Products. Dibutyl in... Dibutyl. Yeah. In food supplements. Yes. Yeah. Products. At the competent <laughs> agencies. <laughs> Okay. Hearing no further comment, we will go on to the next. The IBP. Okay, so here we have phthalate that has fairly robust developmental toxicity data set. No reproductive toxicity data set, no human. Measured in human studies. IBP? But, uh, but no, they're exposure, yeah, but I mean in terms of toxicity. Yeah, it's, it's measured in some of the epidemiologic studies. Oh, because it doesn't say that here. It says no published human studies. I didn't write not correct? That. Yeah, it's not correct. Oh, okay. I think it needs some update because... So that's... Right now, there is no real quantifiable number in products under the purview of uh, CPSC. In indoor dust and
It's mostly an indoor dust. What does it get there? That remains to be understood. We can go back and check it a little bit farther. What do you what do you say about exposure holder? Well, there is omnipresent and quantifiable exposure. And the I think the margins of exposure are in the relevant region that that we currently see. I've got it. DIDP is. Oh, DIDP? Is that what we're looking at? DIBP. DIBP, yeah. Um, what I have, as it's mostly diet in indoor air. Yeah, but just uh, some. I think it's, you know, that could be a lack of data. All right, indoor air. It's not indoor dust. I apologize. I meant indoor air. Well, no, I didn't. I, I'm wrong. It's in, in. It says indoors here. So if I go break it down, <sighs> DIBP direct ingestion, which is house dust, but it's not that. That would be. I think it's indoor. I mean, there's a, you do get it from indoor air. Indoor air, yeah. In house dust. IDP. Inhalation rate for house dust. In di but diet is the? The primary driver. Yeah, mostly diet. Mostly diet. It's indoor air from dust. But it's not from the toys or the products that are used by CPSC. Russ, what do you have on, on human toxicity? Can you? Associations were found in the SWAN AGD study, and then in some of, I mean, my response to your question will be more general rather than going through each one. Yep. And then also some associations found with the neurodevelopmental outcomes. Neuro? Neuro, yeah. So I've started to kind of prepare text that will be rel you know, relatively short for each one and, and be kind of worded similarly. I don't think we want to get into the specific neuro tests, et cetera, because right. that's all in another part of the report. Yeah. yeah. So does this become similar to DEP? No. So this is somewhat similar to DBP. Pardon me? DEP, yeah. yeah. Tox-wise and exposure-wise. Similar to which? DEP. DEP? Dibutyl. Dibutyl. DBP. DB. The IBP definitely is in the same ballpark with the active. Yeah. However, it is not covered by any band right now, is it? Not banned. And it's not present in any. But it's a possible substitute for dibutyl phthalate. But we don't know. So we should say, what? No further action unless they decide to use it for CPSC-related project products. We don't know. It's 
it goes back to the, you know, give other agencies the opportunity to deal with this most directly and for diet and whatever. Yeah, we clearly have the indications that this is an active delayed. Yes. So I think it's different compared to DEP. So how should we handle an active phthalate? I think we need to indicate that in risks first. So yes. Well, for the way we, we have to say it's. I mean, that, I'm not sure. Look at the hazard statements. Is an incomplete data set? Is that accurate? Well, I think that may be based on the fact that in in this write up it says there are no. <laughs> No published human studies, and that's not correct. So that hazard statement needs to be, I think, changed. I think it would have to mean uh, exposure to DRBP can cause developmental and reproductive effects. Reproductive, there, there apparently isn't. Um, Similar to the DBP wording. Mm -hmm. yeah. You want to. Go to that mic and cut and paste it, and then we can modify it if needed. Well, the question I have is, how do we make, how do we ensure that it's not put in kids' products? It's if it's not there now at the appreciable quantities, but it can be used as a substitute. We're not just talking about children's products when we're talking about number C. Part no, no, C no, no. I, I understand that that part. I understand totally. I'm thinking a little farther ahead. Because it's a little more complicated than DEP. <clears throat> Data and animals suggest that it. Oh, okay. That last part, because we don't know that target organ, I don't think. It's oh, there may be. Right, maybe, yeah. Most likely. Most likely. Like just add the I. No, but what is most likely about the, the IVP they just cut out? Okay, now, do we want to say can cause developmental effects? <sighs> do Do we want to say is it animal studies? Because I don't know. Well, it's animal and human. Both. Okay. Yes. Cause developmental. Even as repro developmental? Yeah, that's fine. Productive slash developmental. Neural. There's also the neurodevelopment. Would we leave it at developmental effects? Do we have to precise, be more precise? Would you, do we need to include neurological? But did, I don't, did we for DBP? No, we didn't. Or, so yeah. I, would I would try to keep things consistent and as yeah. we go through. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, it'll be described above anyway. In humans, I think. Well, I, I okay. I mean, I think the yeah should say can cause reproductive and developmental. <coughs> Why do we want to lose the inhumans in the end? Isn't that the we focus? It's sort of redundant. Yeah. Animal and human studies.
Okay. You want to want to copy the risk for BP? Let's have a look at it, huh? That's. On human data, what we want to say here. I don't know what are the MOEs. Our table for the MOEs for the 95th percentile for DIBP are from like 5,800 to much bigger. 7,000. Bodies before or the 95th percentiles for the. What was it, 5,800? Um, Yes, or 5,900 to 147,000. That's the 95th percentile. <clears throat> so 5,800 is the median? That's the lower. So we gave a range um, on the 95th percentile based on the... Uh, Reference dose cases. Okay, so one of the cases had the lower value there. So it's fifty eight hundred to. So if I mean I'm not sure if we're going to consistently talk about the ninety fifth percentile, or the median. Okay, I think um, I've been asked to uh, have a break. So let's uh, save that mic and we'll come back to it in, in 20 minutes. Okay, okay we are back in session. So we're working on uh, DIBP, and uh, we need to uh, complete the uh, risk statement. I think the hazard statement is, is complete, is that correct? Yes. Now, Definitely have to. We have delete the first sentence here. We have to modify that, obviously. Yeah. Both animal and human data that that can that can stay. So, what do the animal and human data support? Yeah, well, the DBP should be DIBP. Support. Currently not banned. Right. Support initiating. 
This isn't there. the band discussion. This is based on what we want to say our evaluation of the risk is, right? Yep. This, the MOE statement is correct for DIBP. Yeah, what was there was basically pasted from DBP. Is it pasted from the risk? Yes. What, what do the numbers in the brackets mean? 700 to 80,000? That's, that's, that's left over like from yeah. DBP. Oh, oh. So is the rest of that sentence. That, that's actually based on the NHANES um, exposure data, the margin of exposure in our table. But if we look at the hazard quotient um, from the different studies, the uh, infants have, I don't know if you want to say that, but the infants have, um, one of the cases have a um, hazard index of uh, 0.1 at the at the 99th percentile. <coughs> and I, I would suggest that since we're thinking of this in cumulative risk assessment, we're, that's in the area where we might be concerned. I'm not saying we need to say that, though, Mike. I'm saying I'm just pointing that out as well, a discussion point. Well, we're talking about risk, so I think we need to say that. That's going to be what we're going to base our recommendation on. Okay. Presumably. I don't want to confuse the discussion you have. I quite frankly don't understand the last statement. How can the Hazard quotient B 0.1 when the margin of exposure is from 5,000. Different data. The mm -hmm. hazard of quotient there was from the infant study, the SSSFF data, but the margin of exposure we calculated only was based on the NHANES data. We didn't use the exposure in the children in the in that calculation. I'm just I'm just reading off of the tables we created. But isn't this rather confusing to say here? Should we leave it out? Leave it out. It makes it very confusing. The hazard quotient or the MOEs? Why does that make it confusing? It's two different data sets. Why does that? Chris, I think we should, we should uh, for the margins of exposure, look at all data sets and therein oh. we should include. So we should update the margins of exposure, including both the NHANES and the SFF data set. Well, the NHANES is for. This is for women, pregnant women, and and also the general population, or just. Let me check. Pregnant women. So for the same case, the pregnant women was point oh four. Why, however, however, doesn't make any sense as a connector. Right? Yeah, but that's not however. It's, it's something else. I think we should stick with the margin of exposure, and the margin of exposure should include, should be overall populations I investigated. Agree. And I think that's the way it should be. Yeah.
we wouldn't specify the pregnant women here. Sir, if we did this on multiple populations, how would you express that then? Would you just give the range of the most sensitive one? Would you give the range of, you, you wouldn't specify what it was based on? Pregnant women versus infants, et cetera. I think our populations are clear. We investigated. Pregnant women in the Haines and the SFF people. Is that MOE for um, all of them, you know, basically, or just for the infants? One that I gave that the, the 5,800, 148. That's for the NHANES pregnant women. Okay. Uh, and the range comes from um, the different cases we consider for the reference doses. So do we know what the hazard quotient was for women? I haven't calculated it, but we can. But are you waiting for me to calculate it? Well, no, no. Oh, I mean, okay, what, I was going because I'm. What do we want to else want to say? Well, I think, I mean, the fact that the infants, we, we can switch away from the hazard index and change that to margin of exposure, but it's going to be with a 0.1 value, it's going to be, you know, around 1,000, which, so I, I would, I think we're in the place where we need to um where we would say that's too low of a margin. Hey, can you do a split screen so we can have the DBP on there as well? I'd like to see how that, see that risk statement again that we did for the.
up to the risk statement for DBP. No, no it's that's the, it's the wrong one. That's, yeah, we just did that. Want to say something about um, the IBP, the IBP, and uh, toys and and uh, child care articles and but right now it's not found in it at levels that are. Yep, you want that sort of statement in there, don't you, Mike? Oh uh, yeah. But maybe not in the risk section, do we? Well, that's where we have it here. Yeah, I think we need it in the risk section. section. Like currently, DIBP is not found in. No exposure, no risk. Currently, or. Found or detected? Vulgar. Don't want to debate you. Found or detected? I think this is probably more precise. I think it is. I mean, so I think what we need is an evaluation of what we think those values look like. I'm not sure that that includes describing what's in toys and not. So after the second sentence, don't we need to evaluate if we think Well, that could go in our recommendation. I mean, these are the these risks are for the general, or, or for total exposure. Right. Um, but the exposure from the toys and childcare articles is, as far as we know, negligible. Yeah. We haven't said what we think the general risk is. That's what I would propose we think about before we start talking about the toys. Now these these MOEs are based on the 99th. Yes.
So, I mean, I need to verify the exposure numbers that I've gotten from a table. I mean, again, this is a problem of pulling up tables. I'm not quite sure the, the, if it's accurate. Now, I think those are correct, the NHANES, but for the infants, right? what I'm calculating now for the infants, um, based on a 99th percentile exposure estimate for infants, Wait a minute, typo. We can fill that in. It goes from a thousand to twenty five thousand. That's the 99th percentile. Chris, do you want to say then that have the same statement, the margins of exposure for DIBP Parentheses, 1,000 to 25,000 are small considering the severity of X described. Yes, I mean, that's, those are the kinds of statements I think we need to have an evaluation of what we mean, how we evaluate those numbers, I, I, is what I would suggest after the first paragraph, or at the end of the first paragraph under C. I think your suggestion, Phil, is a good one. But Mike, copy the margins of exposure sentence up there and paste it. Uh, everybody happy with that? I don't like that it really mirrors the, to what we said with DBP. You don't like that? Yeah, because this term, all, it, the exposure is lower than, than dibutyl phthalate. So, I would simply not state this last sentence. What would you substitute? We have to evaluate. All we've done is stated a number. Don't we have to interpret what we mean? How, you know, we have a, a margin of exposure in infants from 1,000 to 25,000. So do we consider that too small? Is that an acceptable? And how is that going to drive our recommendation? Anything. Pardon? Not going to do anything to our recommendation because it's not in children's products. I mean, I, I, this is we're getting off track again. We're going back to public health, and uh, it's, we're going to be here for 10 years based upon how we're going. We have to But this isn't the recommendation We have section. to make... I'm sorry, we have to make 
our, our arguments based upon what our charge is. You, you will need to explain this for, again, you're talking a total exposure, which is not where our, our, our charge is. And I'm, I'm, we're just going to be here all day, and we're, we're not going to get anywhere. I have to rein in what we think. It's not that these things are not public health issues, but I don't see where this is heading. And well, to be quite, and to be quite uh, frank, if I go down to number six. Let's provide some direction then. Let me, let me, no, let me go down to number six, which is the most mm -hmm. important point of all. Go down to number six, where we have to make a statement. <clears throat> Would this recommendation, if implemented, expected to reduce exposure to children? No, it wouldn't, but the case is equivalent to DBP. So clearly, I think the, the risk assessment based on current exposures, as these margins of exposure would suggest there, indicate there's nothing, there's no case to answer, or it's not sort of within the critical zone. However, what we've said before about the toxicological effects of DIBP um, shows that they're very similar to DBP. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, it can be concluded that although currently not present or not widely used in children's toys, the IBP is not the kind of substance you want to see in children's toys. Which is fine. Ever. Which is fine. Yeah. I, I think so. so we're, we could, we're, the, we're this should be reflected in the recommendations. So yeah. Let's say that again. Well, current exposure to DIBP alone, alone yeah, uh, do not uh, do not indicate yeah a high level of concern yeah. Um, the substance is currently not widely used in articles under the remit of CPSC. Fine. However, the toxicological profile of the IBP is very similar to that of DBP. Um, Then something like, um, you know, th this is not, therefore the, um, someone help me, I'm not even a native speaker. Well, therefore, um, recommend that it be banned yeah. from any consideration for future use in children's toys, period. Yeah, something yeah. like that. that. That's all. I mean. I don't want to spend the day just dealing with details. We have to make recommendations. We know pretty much where we're going. If we have to wordsmith, fine, but I think we're pretty clear as to where we're going with this particular chemical, and there are a lot of things to deal with, and we just can't, you know, we spent over an hour and a half on this one compound, and I think that's inappropriate. The center. No, no. no. The, 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 yeah. Go up. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. Sorry. Back to what was it? Five. So, um, would you to be clear? Because you're, you're saying we recommend it should not be used in toys and childcare articles. The the terms that we should be using are ban, interim ban, you know, et cetera, no action. Recommend should be banned and not used in toys and child care articles. I Just so we're using the same. I think that's what I said. 
but it's not written there. Yeah. All right. Um, Just from, um, from use or to prevent the ban from use. Get rid of it in the future. Yeah. Now, the question I have is that number six at the present time, no, because it's not used in it, but we. I want this to materialize as being part of children's toys in the future. Fine. Way of wording it. these products and this chemical. Talking about. Such products. Okay. Let's move on to dipental phthalate. There's one with a very clear developmental toxicity profile. Is it correct? There are no human. B is, is correct as written. What do we say about risk? I don't find it in biomonitoring. I don't find it in toys. I don't find it anywhere. There's no data. Well, minimal. Mi minimal, trivial. I mean, whatever's there is, is not very quantifiable. I think we have infra sufficient information to take any action at this time. I think in terms of hazard, we have to be aware that uh, dipental phthalate is clearly in the heart of activity of the phthalates. Yeah. So I would propose a similar wording as for DIBP with 
some more emphasis on on the severity of the toxicity. I don't remember the authors, but there was a, a recent paper that, that that we were given on di on the um, pentol, right, as being very biologically active yeah. in tox studies. All right. Yeah. So, so can we put an interim ban until somebody gives us more data to find out whether this is is or is not a real issue? Toxicity. There's no exposure data. Right. It's been found in human urine, though, on the Silva paper, 2011. Not found in in Haynes. It's is it Holger because there's not a biomarker for it, or you would ex or it's been looked for and not found, or it hasn't properly been looked for. I or think the don't exposure think is be low found. because it is not used. Because those who would use it know how would cr how critical it would be. Probably. So it's not used for good reasons. So, and I think based on the. Toxicity, I think there is no grounds for an interim, but the permanent ban. Because this substance you clearly would not want to see in, in any children's product. Recollection from the tox data, it's, it's, it's more toxic it's than, the most, it than is butyl. In the heart yeah. of toxicity, yeah. Yeah. Maybe even DEHP as well. Yeah. It's a factor of three to five more potent than dibutyl phthalate and DHP. Probably limited tox studies just because it's not one of the phthalates for which there's a lot of interest. So it's not a. Is there no interest because it's not used? Because people are worried about the toxicity from the get go? That's true. I think, Paul, you're saying that um, because of its. Toxicity, toxicity, right, it hasn't really been used mm -hmm. in products. You know. Is that consensus? Andreas, I don't hear you. Um, that's because I didn't say anything. Yes, I, I think it is consensus. Okay, great. Okay. Do we want to lift any of the uh, statements from the DI or DBP or DIBP? I think we have to modify the hazard section because uh, we have to state here that it's clearly among the most potent phthalates. They, as such, the steward is the stewardship for this compound, such that we cannot find it detected in most biomonitoring studies, and not find any estimated exposures in children's products. I'm not sure we're measuring it in in Haynes. Is it Holger? I mean, I don't. We didn't try to model it. Yeah. Um, I think. And Haynes yet I do measure it, but I I really don't have any positive detects. I don't just say the stewardship of this company that we don't find it in our estimates of exposure from children's products and we wouldn't. Your stewardship is the right word, but well, I'm trying to figure out a word for it too. But stewardship was the best I could start with.
thing. It's a potent chemical, but the exposure isn't high. But the risk there, I think we don't. Risk because it's a potent chemical and people don't use it. That's why the risk is low. It's not because the hazard's low. Low it's risk, but high hazard. It's but the exposure is low. That statement in there, and, and also the fact that it's not used currently in yeah, that's, in that's children's the issue toys of, and that's the issue of stewardship because it is such a highly potent compound. Again, you've got this; it's not in the products, it's not in the environment. However, it's, it's highly toxic. It's highly toxic. Like when I I'm standing those, next standing next to a vial of uh, weapon grade. Um, Anthrax, which I have, it's highly toxic, but it's not touching me. I think I think that needs to go in the risks part to be consistent with our other. I would I would not have that first statement. I don't think that's worth. Yeah, I would start out that way and then just say, however, it's not found in children's toys and personal care products, and it's not routinely found in biomonitoring. Right. Yeah. to what we said before for um, IBP, it's, it's the kind of chemical we don't want to find in children's toys. So that split screen, maybe you could go to the DIBP part. I am a bit reluctant to name a highly toxic compound. Shouldn't we just say it's? I would say it's a developmental toxicant. It's a yeah. This highly toxic sounds in my ears. What? It's strange. Would you use in its place? Potent. Are you potent here? Have a, a potent developmental toxicant. Somebody told me you mentioned it's the most potent. Phthalates, but does it of the phthalates? Or we're talking about phthalates. But and you could here you, you could said frame it, it that way, Mike. Is yeah. is the most potent developmental? And we're dealing with people who are going to look at these yep. things that may not be scientists. And I think phthalates, based upon your experiences, that is a reasonable. Back to its developmental toxicity. the toxic after developmental <clears throat>
Finita, however, is currently not found in children's toys. And A third sentence, tying those together, I mean, because you're basically almost repeating what the exposure and hazard sections are saying. You're saying it's a hazard, there's no exposure, therefore, risk is low, minimal, neg negligible, you know, be because of the exposure not being present, current, right? Current risk, right. Right. With right. low exposure, it's, it's low risk. Six. want uh, an intermediate statement, you know, something below exposure, you know, straight to the ban. I mean, should this phrase be precede the recommendation? Have to give the recommendation first. Uh, how would how would you word it? Yeah, oh, I, I, I don't it's know just what a, you change. Uh, an abrupt However, the transition. If well, sometimes you can have to be abrupt. <laughs> I think it says it clearly. Everybody happy with that? All right. Let us move on to butyl benzyl. Right. So can, can I suggest we do a cut and paste job uh, from DBP because it's a totally analogous case. Mm -hmm. Mm
trying to see if you yeah, you missed I recycled the your lab. The margin of exposure, if I'm, if this needs to be verified, but the 95th from the SFF study, the 95th percentile. Mm -hmm. 7,000 to 150,000. Infants, the 99th percentile for BBP. Twenty-seven to three thousand. Can you say that again? Ninety in infants. This is from the SFS yeah, study. The numbers. The ninety-ninth is from um, BBP. Two hundred twenty-seven to three thousand. Or I guess if we're rounding two hundred to three thousand, what a have we're going to round? But let's not start that again. A little higher in in uh, ranging from about thirty five hundred to forty seven thousand. anything here not an issue in pharmaceuticals is it and you delete the last sentence in 4c And this, what, this sentence? No, you deleted the one from, from dibutyl phthalate. Scroll up to the dibutyl phthalate. No, the other way. Have to make the same statement here because we are in the range of 200.
700 to 80. Got six, but Okay, let's move on to the next one, see if we can do one more before lunch. Dihexyl phthalate. Yeah, cyclohexyl. I don't think there yeah, are any human studies this yeah. time. Measurement. <clears throat> What would be the metabolite that they would measure if there are? I don't know if Ensign Enhanes has it. It is it, it yeah. says here it's it found detective. infrequently in the urine of Enhanes. Yeah. The, the simple monoester is used, the monocyclohexyl phthalate. MCHP. And uh I I I rarely see it. Actually I don't see it. Mm. There's nothing in toys either. The estimates in toys are negligible. You don't even report it. So it's very infrequently. What can we can we make statements? It's, it's not used in currently used in children's toys and child care products, correct? You can make that statement. It's not a case fairly analogous to uh, the mental or the yeah, pentile, which we discussed.
Yeah. Pen tool? D, D P E N P. We do a cut and paste. Except the, I don't think the toxicity, developmental toxicity is the same. No, no, I agree, but. No. I mean, uh, the, it, the, it is one of the more potent phthalates as far as I can see. OL of 16. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it, it's, that they're, they're. Right. No, we couldn't. But I agree, it's, it's analogous to. Uh, Closure and risk, you know, in terms of the, mm -hmm. it's not very, it's not really used. about the recommendation. Should do all before lunch. <laughs> okay, moving on to dihexyl phthalate. Now here's uh, similar to the last one, however, there's only one developmental talk study. But it, you know, it 
produced effects similar to other phthalates, active phthalates. Noel of, Noel of 250. No human toxicity. No current use children's products. Right. I assume so. I don't. But there is no information on exposures, biomonitoring. Or to what was written for cyclohexyl. Yeah. I think this is a good time to break for lunch. Okay. Start session at roughly one o'clock. Okay, one o'clock. Sounds good. <laughs>